Hello and welcome to GFTL, Indie News This Week. Frozen Synapse creators Mode 7 release a teaser trailer for their new game Frozen Endzone. The Skullgirls Indiegogo campaign has reached over $400,000 pledged and has revealed new plans for stretch goals. Abbey Games, the developers of Rius, have released a new Dev Diary trailer. NASA's Dark Side of the Moon game jam has completed, spawning lots of space-themed games. And in indie releases, Legend of Dungeon has ended closed beta, Slamjet Stadium for the iPad has been released, and Ridiculous Fishing has also been released for iOS. A trailer for Frozen Endzone, the new game by Mode 7, has been released. It contains gameplay footage of two robotic teams playing an American football style game. As the name is very similar to Mode 7's first game, Frozen Synapse, we can assume that there are very similar elements between them. Frozen Synapse was very famous for its turn-based gameplay and competitive elements. As is demonstrated in the trailer, there is a planning phase where both teams take the time to plan out each person's movement and then a few seconds of the game play out to see which was more effective. I'm sure this will be a very popular game with both the Frozen Synapse and American football fans. Because of the similarity between the way an American football play looks and the planning phase, that will probably draw in those kind of crowds. And because of the fact that Frozen Synapse still has a very active, competitive community, I'm sure that they will enjoy moving on to this game as well. The graphic style for Frozen Endzone has also had an upgrade. As opposed to Frozen Synapse's cyberpunk lo-fi neon look, this game looks like it incorporates that into high detail 3D models. The animations were also something I was impressed by. The way that they fell over, tackled other players, grappled with other players was very impressive. I'm not entirely sure how far along the game is, but it looked very polished. For those of you who've been keeping track of the Game Station's Blood Bowl League, or are Blood Bowl fans in general, you might want to keep an eye on the development of this game. For American football and turn-based strategy fans alike, Mode 7's reputation makes this game very promising. My favourite part of Frozen Synapse was probably the campaign. I'm not sure how they'd incorporate a story arc into a sport-based game, but I do hope that they somehow achieve it, and either way, this is definitely a game to watch. The Skullgirls Indiegogo campaign has currently raised $428,170, which is far in excess of the original $150,000 goal. This means that the development cost of their new character Squiggly has been fully covered, along with a stage and story for her, a Republican double voice pack, and another character called Big Band. The next stretch goal is a Salty Parasol voice pack, and at $600,000 they will also work on a mystery DLC character which will be chosen by the fans. With only 11 days left I'm not entirely sure whether they can make the 600,000 mark, but as the Skullgirls community has already shown they're very generous and really enjoy the franchise, so it's not something that can be ruled out altogether. The designers have released a list of characters that they would like to include in the Skullgirls, from which the community can vote on. They've also set further stretch goals, which include the $825,000 mark, which will let them include a second mysterious character. Now, I would normally say that things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo are reserved for projects that want to start up and can't find the funding or the loan, and want to find their customer base while swelling up some interest in the project, as well as obviously funding it. But in this case, I think it's wonderful that the community and the developers are interacting so well to keep something they love fresh and alive. Oftentimes in the game industry, DLC can be seen as a money grab, but in the case of a fighting game where there's a meta game to consider, this is a very ambitious project, and I wish Lab Zero the best of luck in creating this DLC. A new development diary has been released for the game Rius by Abbey Games. They are documenting the development of the game while showing off some of the aspects of the gameplay. If you haven't seen it before, the game involves using the powers of your giants to affect the landscape, whether it be creating a mountain with a rock giant, a forest with the forest giant, or an ocean with the ocean giant, they all have different effects on the area surrounding them. Different topographical features have different effects on the landscape and the people and animals living within. In this video, they focus on the interaction between the different elements of the landscape. They call this symbiosis, which means that if you have some chickens and they produce food for the humans that live by, they can produce more food by feeding on blueberries that you can place in the world. This increases the available resources for the humans, which allows them to expand into the world and create more advanced projects. 
Now, as is hinted by little snippets of the video, this doesn't necessarily always go your way, and your giants may end up being attacked. I'm very interested in the indirect control that you have over the environment, and therefore the people. This gives it an almost voyeuristic look, where you're kind of an almighty being, lording it overall, using your avatars to shape things to your will. What I would be interested to know more about is because your avatars interact with the environment, and that affects how the humans react to you, the humans can turn nasty, which adds some peril to a genre where normally you're an unassailable deity. Despite this, you need the humans to improve your powers by using their ambassadors. This gives you extra abilities, like making the resources that you can grow more potent. Overall, it's a very impressive looking god game, and looks different enough from something Peter Molyneux would create to make it their own, while still being focused enough in its design that it would attract people that love god games. On the weekend of March 8th, NASA hosted a game jam called Dark Side of the Jam. This was aimed to create products that could be shown to kids in at-risk schools. There were 23 games produced at NASA's Ames campus in California, and 40 games from locations worldwide. These games ranged from things that messed with gravity, to rocket builders such as this one in the background made by Cryptic Sea. There's a very interesting article on IndieGames.com that summarises the whole event. Unfortunately some things did go wrong, where there were people who didn't turn up, and there was political red tape that said that NASA couldn't be seen to spend money on video games. This is a great shame and unfortunately blurred the overall message of the game jam, but the article does mention that everyone had fun and was very productive. The games are available for free to download or play on the internet over at the Dark Side of the Jam website. They're all cool, small things that you can mess around with and have fun playing. And if video games can't convince kids to go into science, then I don't know what will. And now on to indie releases. Developers Robot Love Kitty have released their closed beta of Legend of Dungeon for $10 from the Humble Store. It can also be purchased with the soundtrack for $15, and is available on Windows, Mac and Linux. I've seen a lot of multiplayer dungeon crawling games being developed recently, and they all look amazing. I think the fact that dungeon crawling has traditionally been an RPG genre single player game means that developers want to mix this up and add lots of people into the mix with awesome different classes and things like that. This game includes lots of procedural generation of characters, dungeon layout, weapons, loot, all that good stuff, which is always a drive for people to come back again and again to play the game. The music in Legend of Dungeon is also dynamically generated based on many many tracks written by their composer. They also have a Steam Greenlight page, so if you do buy the game and enjoy it, make sure to pop over there and vote for it. Slamjet Stadium by Alistair Aitchison has also been released for iOS. He first came to everyone's attention with his game Greedy Bankers vs The World, which was a multiplayer puzzle game where you connected various gems together to make lots of money for your banker. He's known for his tongue-in-cheek humour, hand-drawn game art, and being a general all-round good guy. In both Greedy Bankers and Slamjet Stadium, he encourages people to engage with each other physically and occasionally do that little bit of foul play. This is always really amusing because you're both playing on the same touch screen at the same time, trying to get your fingers in there, and it's always good fun. The game is now available for iPad for £1.99 or $2.99. Ridiculous Fishing by Vlambeer has been released. As you would imagine, it is a ridiculous fishing game where you catch fish, throw them up in the air, and try to shoot them for as many points as possible. This is in fact a sequel to the first game they ever made called Radical Fishing. Unfortunately, there was an incident a while back where another game studio very much cloned the game and sold it for themselves. However, as the game has now been released, they want to put that all behind them and move on to creating more innovative and fun games. Ridiculous Fishing is now available on the App Store for $2.99, but if you are unsure whether you want to purchase it, the original Radical Fishing is available for free on the internet still. It is very much a ridiculously fun game, and I highly recommend it. And that's the indie news highlights from the last fortnight. If you are interested in any of the topics raised in this show, I've put a complete list of links in the description. If there's ever anything you'd like to talk to me about, feel free to contact me via YouTube, my email, or my Twitter. Once again, thanks for watching, and goodbye!